We have six people who care way too much about fantasy football flying into Austin, Texas from all over the world to give you must-draft receivers this season, starting with the Canadian from the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Corey, who's your guy? My guy's Devontae Smith. Uh, I think people have a sour taste in their mouth from the Eagles offense last year. I understand the pessimism to some degree, but pass rate over expected. Kellen Moore, new offensive coordinator coming in. He's been top five with the Cowboys, with the Chargers the last couple of years. Jalen Hurts, I'm thinking there's going to be a nice bounce back for him in this offense. Adding Saquon, you have all the great talent around Devontae. The big question that people have would be A.J. Brown's the alpha there. He's the guy that commands most of the targets. But by all reports, Devontae Smith having a fantastic camp. Devontae Smith pound for pound, 15, top 15 receiver in the league. So I just want pieces of this offense. And the value where you get Devontae Smith, fourth, sometimes even fifth round, that's why he's a must-draft receiver. You can go get your anchor running back early or anchor one or two running backs early and still get a great option and a great offense like Smith. 100%. A couple things with this. I think you get the discount because he is the wide receiver two behind A.J. Brown. But because there's no wide receiver three there that has any kind of target volume, if you look at his target share compared to other wide receiver ones, uh, his target share may be higher than DK Metcalf's, you know, and you're looking at this Eagles offense and it is a top offense. So if you just kind of ignore, yes, the fact that he's technically the number two, but instead look at the raw numbers of his target share, the efficiency of this offense, and if the volume of the Eagles offense expands closer to what we saw two years ago, I think he is someone that has wide receiver one upside that you can get after you have two elite running backs and an elite quarterback. Yeah, and I've done a lot of research just on wide receiver hits in the mid rounds because notoriously, this is a guy where all like a range of the draft where some of the wide receivers blend together. You don't know which guy to pick, throw them all in a hat, they're all the same. But guys who have actually finished as wide receiver ones who are still in their prime under 28 years old, they hit return on ADP like 47% of the time. And Devontae Smith finished as a back-end wide receiver one two years ago, has a chance, again, in a great offense, very good talent. It's, it's hard to poke holes in him that don't start with, A.J. Brown is there. That's the only real hole you can poke in Devontae Smith. And I think, like I said, the volume has a chance to go up. And like you said, even a 25% target share, you can be the number two in that offense because there's no number three at wide receiver. Well, thank you, my guy. And just in case you haven't heard, I want 100000 on Underdog Fantasy in the Big Dog with Devonta Smith as my wide receiver too. So, of course, if you want to draft with me, I'm drafting every single night on Underdog Fantasy Best ball, no time commitment at all during the year. So I draft hundreds of teams every season. So I won 150000 on Underdog two years ago. And you can find that link to join a draft with me in the description, comment section, live chat. If you use code FLOCK, you're going to get a 50% deposit bonus up to 1000 bucks. Get my 2024 rankings, my 2024 draft guide, plus a special Christian McCaffrey pick em, more than less than half a total yard for week one. You do have to be in one of these states, though, if you want to draft on Underdog. You can see the map here. All right, we have Avery from Domain Fantasy Football coming down from Indy. Who's our most draft wide receiver? So I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk here. And Ayuk was not somebody that I was really high on at the beginning of the offseason. But, you know, with the news about him potentially being traded, I think you've seen his price kind of trend down in a lot of fantasy football drafts. I mean, you look at underdog now, he's going as the wide receiver 18. Uh, in that range at the end of the second, we're at the 2 3 turn when you're drafting in fantasy football. There are a lot of options there that are kind of all in the same range in terms of fantasy production, in terms of their outlook. And the thing I like about Ayuk is he's extremely efficient. He's been able to be efficient with, you know, 105 targets about a year, 100 to 110. He's got about seven, eight touchdowns a year, uh, but he averaged 18 yards per catch last year. You look at his efficiency metrics. He was like second in the league in like yards per out run. And so this is a guy that I think I'm comfortable with him because I think he's got crazy upside. He's a big play guy. I think he's the number one receiver there. He can still play alongside Debo Kittle, you know, Christian McCaffrey and get his own. So with Brandon Ayuk, I'm definitely still taking advantage of this potential discount you're going to get because of the situation. I think it's the most likely scenario at this point, he just resigns with San Francisco. Yeah, which is really interesting because it seems like most people are on that page where he is going to resign. But the fall that he had in ADP because it seemed like he was going to be a stealer for a little bit has not changed at all. He has not rebounded in the slightest. So if you're drafting like today, this weekend, you may be able to get Ayuk at the end of the third, the beginning of the fourth, even though in reality, he should probably be someone that's going at the end of the second, the beginning of the third, which is where we saw him going earlier in the offseason. Exactly. And again, when you look at the guys around him, I feel like some of them have significantly more risk than Brandon Ayuk. And so, especially with the discount, a lot of times the fantasy community is slow to react to news like this, or even slow to react to expected news. And like you said, you can still get him at a significant discount. It's all about price for me. And Ayuk is a guy that was the wide receiver 14, wide receiver 15 in half PPR leagues the last two years. And so because of that, I mean, I think that the sky's the limit for Brandon Ayuk. I think he's going to be a niner. He's going to be on one of the best offenses in the NFL and I'm really comfortable drafting him this year we're going down under to fantasy land football coming from Australia my guy who's our receiver 
Obviously, you can see the hat on, so it might be some bias. Okay. But remove the off-field issues. What is there not to love about Rasheed Rice? Like every single part of his game, I'm absolutely obsessed with. A lot of people don't realize this, but he had probably the best rookie wide receiver season ever for a Kansas City Chief in particular. First in receptions all time for rookie wide receivers. Was second in receiving touchdowns, second in receiving yards. He's connected to the best quarterback of our generation. If you look at weeks 11 onwards, he finally became a starter for this team. He wasn't a starter before that. Obviously, after the bye week, these guys start to become starters as rookies. He averages about 17 points per game from that point onwards. This is pretty much, in my opinion, a cheap Nico Collins this year, right? A lot of wide receivers in that offense, really good quarterback that they're connected to. From week 11 onwards, he scored more points per game than Mike Evans, Michael Pittman, De uh, Devonta Smith, Brandon Ayuk, DK Metcalf, Chris Olave, Jamar Chase, AJ Brown. And from week 11 onwards, his 17 game pace, all right? And that's not what I'm projecting, but his 17 game pace, 114 receptions, 150 targets, and almost 1,400 receiving yards. So to me, he's one of the easiest picks on the draft board right now, especially if he's still in the fifth round in your leagues, ESPN. He's like a sixth round pick. Don't understand it. I know they brought in some new receivers, but. Yeah, I think this is like the perfect example. If you look at receivers in the middle round range, yeah. they are so appealing where you can find so many of these guys that have that crazy high ceiling. And with his situation in particular, while they add in Hollywood and while they add in Worthy, these are two wide receivers that profile to be deep threat options where she rice isn't going further than 10 yards down the field at the very most. He's yeah. just sitting there at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, what you could may see is you may see the volume come down a bit, sure. but because these other guys are stretching the field, the efficiency may go up for rice. He's also a yak monster. Like if you look at yak per reception, he was better than a lot of the guys who are like the professionals at that last year, even as a rookie. And if you think about Travis Kelsey already starting to decline last year, over the middle of the field, you're going to see more opportunities for a guy like Rasheed Rice, who's ascending while Kelsey, we still love him, still a great player, but, you know, descending as a, you know, gets older. Going back over to the stock exchange, Danny, my guy, who are we going with? We are smashing Nico Collins of the Houston Texans, and people are really questioning how this dynamic is going to work with these Houston wide receivers. Obviously, Nico Collins being there, Stephon Diggs being there, Tank Dell being there, but the way I view this is we have one superstar talent in the receiver room, and it's unfortunately not still Stefan Diggs. It is Nico Collins. We're looking at Nico Collins last year. Everybody knows what he represents. Six foot four, 215 pounds, winning on those deep contestant targets down the field. But not a lot of people realize just how good of a separator he is. According to Matt Harmon's reception perception, he actually graded as a 90th percentile against man and press coverage. We also saw it in terms of man coverage composite grade, ranked second in the league to CD Lamb. Attached, obviously, to a great quarterback play with C.J. Stroud. Attached to great offensive insulation there with Bobby Slocon and the shots with those Houston Texans. When I look at Nico Collins, he has the most specialized role of these trio of wide receivers. Being the stature he is, 6'4", 215 pounds, playing on the outside as that X wide receiver, I think it's a lot more likely that Stephon Diggs and Tank Dell chip into each other as slider wide receivers, working between that Z and slot role, whereas Nico Collins in 21 personnel, in 12 personnel, is the last receiver to leave the field. So with Nico Collins, I think he has a legitimate top five level ceiling this season, and having that type of profile attached to this offensive insulation going in the second round, I'm smashing the button every single time. And in a lot of your home leagues, he may even go in the third round. A guy I would feel comfortable taking in the mid-second portion of my drafts. Yeah, I am lucky that we recorded that video on flockfantasy.com with each other a couple months ago. And you gave me this Nico Collins pitch, which I previously had not been taking a lot of him. But this was like one of the few guys that I got sold on. You legitimately sold me on him because you look at the preseason now with what's happening. And just like you described, every personnel group, Nico Collins is on the field. If CJ Stroud's dropping back, you don't know if uh, Diggs will be out there. You don't know if Tank Dell's going to be out there. But Nico Collins will be out there running a route. So I think that just does elevate his overall floor and his ceiling in this offense, which I owe you a big time thank you for convincing me a couple months ago. I got you. And I mean, just projecting forward, CJ Stroud, we saw what he was able to do as a rookie, but there's so much left meat on the bone. Obviously, you know, 23 touchdowns, five interceptions, 4,000 passing yards, very, very good rookie season. But we saw Justin Herbert off of his great rookie season take that next step, become a 5,000-yard passer, become 38 touchdowns in the passing touchdown department. And well, there's no real excuse for CJ Shaw not to reach that type of level. He's got the talent. He's got the wide receivers, specifically with Nico Collins, to the point where this could very well be a the next 4,800 passing yard, 35, 40 passing touchdown type of passer. And with Nico Collins, the ability to score touchdowns, I mean, we even saw it in the playoff game. It's just such a safe click this year. All right, we have Nathan from Domain Fantasy Football begging me to talk about TJ Hawkinson, but this is a wide receiver video. 
So we're going to go through, ask you, who are you taking out wide receivers? Yeah, I'm going to go with Calvin Ridley this video. And I generally am like, I, I, I just say the same thing on repeat about Calvin Ridley. But I kind of want to approach it from a different angle this time because I do think that the situation is being a little bit overlooked and how it could actually be really positive for him. I, I think it hasn't really like resonated with people yet or, or, or marinated yet that like Brian Callahan is the head coach there now. It's not Mike Vrabel. They're not going to be running the ball like they have been for years and years where they kind of have a subpar passing game and, and not a ton of volume to go around. And with Calvin Ridley moving from Jacksonville to Tennessee, I don't think there's really that much of a downgrade from a volume perspective and a target quality perspective as well. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, Lawrence wasn't getting him the ball consistently at a, a, a accurately all year in 2023. I mean, he had 140 targets and only hauled in like 75. I legit have never seen that in my life. Like that low number of receptions with, with that much opportunity. So this year, after coming off a year where he was, you know, two years removed from playing football, I think he's going to be ready to go. I think playing alongside DeAndre Hopkins when he's back healthy is actually going to help kind of open the field for him and get him some more opportunity as well. But I'm, I'm a big fan of the situation. Yeah, going back to the Lawrence thing, I think that we probably both agree, at least I'm assuming, that Trevor Lawrence is a better NFL quarterback than Will Levis. But Lawrence last year had that ankle injury that looked like he suffered it, and we were like, okay, yeah, he's done for the year. He's, he's going to be missing the next six weeks. He played through it in the second half of the season. His play dramatically declined, whether it was due to an injury. I don't know what it was due to. But while I think Lawrence is probably a good quarterback, at the end of last season, as you mentioned, he was not consistently accurate. And what I think sells me with Ridley is just the contract that they gave him this offseason. If he got like the Hollywood Brown contract, I'd be saying the same thing I'm with Hollywood. Dust, not worried about it, he, he's done. But the fact that they gave him $72 million, I think does go to show that there, there's something there that's left. He's a feature receiver there. I, you, you don't pay that money to a second option or a guy who's not going to do much for your offense. I mean, l look at what they did at the running back position. They let Derrick Henry go. They go sign Tony Pollard, who's a really good receiving threat, and they pair him with Ty J Spears, who's a really good explosive receiving threat. I, I just think they're going to look pretty similar to kind of what you see in Cincinnati. You know, it's not going to be as efficient or as good because Will Levis isn't Joe Burrow, but it's very clear the direction the Titans want to go with their franchise and how their offense looks. And that is literally the exact opposite of, of what it's previously been. We're going back under to fantasy land football. We got Badaki here. My guy, thank you for joining me. No worries. And appreciate here you going with that receiver. Yeah, for me is Deontay Johnson. I love Deontay Johnson this year. It's actually – Zach actually loves Deontay Johnson as well. But the offense, I think, is what's exciting. The target share that's going to be going his way. I mean, we had to remember what happened last year, right? Adam Thielen, at some point in time, the guy was like one of the best pickups on the late rounds, and he was top 10, top 15 wide receiver for, you know, the first half of the season. Obviously, he was dealing with injuries, but Deontay Johnson stepping up to a, that 137 target share that not Adam Thielen is leaving, but I'm just projecting him to be getting coming into this year. Yes, they drafted Xavier Leggett. Yes, you have John Domingo, who clearly is not nothing. But we also have to remember, Bryce Young is there, and we all loved Bryce Young last year, especially with Dave Canellis coming from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and that offense that's going to be emerging. So for me, Deontay Johnson – I love this year. So there's a joke in my live streams because I have drafted like a decent amount of Panthers, <laughs> even though I'd like I want to be on record and say that I think that they're a bad offense. Sure. I, I think that I they will agree. be bad, but the way that they are priced, they're extremely cheap. I am not playing it with Deontay, but I'm playing it with Leggett instead. Sure. That's but fair. my question to you is, I think like Dynasty, Deontay Johnson can make an impact because your starting lineups are large, right? Mm -hmm. From a redraft perspective, say you only start two wide receivers in a single flex, do you still think Deontay Johnson has the upside to make a difference in that format? Probably not. I think I want to go with a little bit more of a up higher type of value or ceiling when it comes down to that type of format. But I think if you're starting, you know, two wide receivers, two flex, or, you know, if you're going into three flex, then I think I like Deontay Johnson maybe as my wide receiver, you know, my wide receiver three, my wide receiver four. But in those formats, I would say maybe that's a guy that's on my bench that I'm hoping that, hey, maybe he can turn into something, the, you know, the high-end wide receiver, too, that I'm hopefully in projecting out of him. Um, but, yeah, in that format, I would definitely be looking for other high upside guys. Perfect. Hope we were somehow able to help you. Of course, if you want to check out all the rankings for everybody on the video, it's all on flockfantasy.com. 
If you use code FLOCK, yours truly will break down your fantasy football team with the podcast with the annual Mother Flocker subscription. Plus, you also get 30% off any sub. But thank you. Really do appreciate you and really hope I can draft with you soon.